Throughout the first part of the tour, you've seen and heard a wonderful array of music machines. But here in the music of yesterday, you're really in for a tuneful treat, and other delights, of course. An ornate player piano. The boudoir of that <clears throat> entertainer, Kitty Dubois. Now, if you'll please, a moment of reflection for the dearly departed. Tango, anyone? The peacock organ specializes in music with a Latin beat. For a little change of pace, enjoy the flying colors of the rainbow-hued Lepidoptera, featuring rare specimens from around the world. Not your garden variety butterfly collection. Now we are entering the Blue Room. The world's only mechanically operated symphony orchestra silently awaits its cue in a Baroque music chamber setting. Lavishly decorated with Rococo mirrors, chandeliers, and elegant French provincial furniture. Now for something a little more subtle. The Franz Joseph. Well, maybe subtle is not the correct adjective for this soaring syncopation that's more than 27 feet tall and 12 feet wide. In regards to the Mikado, be prepared to be engulfed by a tidal wave of red and gold with cymbals crashing, bells ringing, lanterns glowing, and fans swaying. Our central figures perform with unrelenting fervor the ritual dance of fire and dance macabre. Here is just another one of the amazing automatons throughout the House on the Rock. A musically inclined black bear fiddles, intriguing the curious monkey. The regal tints of blue and gold paint a picture of a flow of ladies in silk accompanied by men in black suits as they listen to Johann Strauss's Blue Danube. Fifteen years in the making, Vienna, Austria has never looked better than in this House on the Rock rendition. Catch your breath window shopping in little streets of yesterday. Admire the heavenly statuary at the religious shop. For those more secularly inclined, the clanging cash registers of yore are sure to draw a contented nod. And finally, in the Red Room, you'll experience a version of Tchaikovsky's The Nutcracker you've never encountered before. A canopied sleigh pulled by an implausible pair, a lion and a tiger, presents a visual irony to the strains of the dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy. Music of yesterday, you've got to experience the world's greatest collection of animated, automated music machines, a sensual treat that captures the sounds of bygone eras. You exit a darkened ramp, entering a huge room overflowing with lights and music. As you move closer to the source, you wonder, what could it be? Revolving forms begin to take shape, revealing the world's largest carousel. And what a mammoth carousel it is, weighing in at 35 tons, yes, 70,000 pounds. It is 35 feet tall, 80 feet across, has 20,000 lights, and is worth four and a half million dollars. But what's this? A fish resting comfortably in a cat's mouth? A brave lion, a giraffe, a dog, a rambunctious ram, an eagle, a frog. There are 269 handcrafted creatures in all cavorting around the carousel. But no horses. Who ever heard of such a thing? A carousel without horses? Fear not, equine lovers. The carousel room is not horseless. There are over 200 carousel horses adorning the walls, and they're the most valuable objects in the room. They are antiques rescued from carnivals and warehouses from around the world. The House on the Rock Carousel, the Stradivarius of carousels.
The carousel room houses more marvels than the main attraction. There's the chariot carousel, steam tractors with the unlikely monikers, Firefly, and Buttercup, and the Gebruder Bruder, a facade from the heyday of German fairs and circuses. According to the friendly folks in the ticket office, Dante never visited the House on the Rock. But his words offer advice to all those hearty souls brave enough to enter the organ room. Through me is the way into the doleful city. Through me, the way into the eternal pain. Through me, the way among the people lost. Leave all hope, ye that enter. Enter through the devil's mouth. There are some strange happenings down here. Spiral staircases, bridges, walkways, and catwalks serpentine through the dizzying array of staggering proportions. Three of the largest theater organ consoles ever built have found a home in the organ room. One with 15 manuals and hundreds of stops. Their accompanying pipes and percussion components have found homes in some of the strangest settings. There is so much more in the organ room to imbibe. There are cannons upon cannons and a titanic propeller that used to drive a whaleback freighter. To provide deliverance from the vast dimensions all about, our little shops of long ago stocked with curios, ladies' hats, and accessories and the House in the Rock boasts a major collection of Remington bronzes. You can easily spend an eternity in the organ room. It's not such a bad place, now is it? Now, enter a domicile of finite details on a Lilliputian scale. Notice how these dollhouse interiors uncannily duplicate the stage setting for the play the dollhouse. A room furnished comfortably and tastefully, but not extravagantly. At the back, a door to the right leads to the entrance hall, another to the left leads to the study. Between the windows stands a piano. In the right-hand wall at the further end, another door. And on the same side, a stove, two chairs, and a rocking chair. The floors are carpeted, and a fire burns in the fireplace. A bell rings, welcoming you into these minutely detailed interiors that are housed in equally minuscule homes of authentic architecture. There are colonial, Victorian, a thatched roof cottage, a turn-of-the-century frame, and at the crossroads, a country gas station grocery store. There are more than 250 dollhouses in this collection each an outstanding example of meticulous craftsmanship. Dwarfed by the colossal circus wagon and its musical escort, a 40-piece band, amazing. The circus band plays in concert with an 80-piece orchestra. This ensemble took 14 craftspeople three years to create, and it encompasses 37 miles of wiring, 31 blowers, and 2,300 pneumatic motors. In the circus room, you'll also find an extensive collection of Barringer motions. Barringers are the animated scenes which were featured in jewelry store windows during the 1920s through the 1950s. So, step right down. Thanks for coming in and join. See you smiling now. I'm knowing you're not human and your day is off and running. Here's something you're sure to get a bang out of. The weapon exhibit at the House in the Rock features a beautifully displayed selection of sidearms, firearms. There's blunderbusses, pepper boxes, fouling pieces, muscatoons, and any other sort of weapon you can shake a club at. Like a gossamer thread, a distinct oriental flavor is present throughout the House on the Rock tour. This compilation climaxes in the oriental collection where you'll experience exquisitely carved ivories, considered by many to be one of the finest privately owned collections anywhere. 
Also on display are ornate, hand-carved cork exhibits and immense porcelain vases. The Oriental Collection will enchant you with these artifacts and numerous other examples of the fine arts of the Orient. In the armor display, you will encounter armor reminiscent of metal apparel popularized in Europe, Japan, and India during days of yore. The House on the Rock's recreation of Hannibal crossing the Alps seems to be the most popular diorama. Shades of King Arthur's Knights of the Round Table are evident in this Gothic armor display, and samurai armor reminiscent of the days of the Shogun are also exhibited. Wars have been fought, alliances concreted, and love consummated over replica riches such as these. The Tower of London Crown Jewel Collection, the Royal Tiara Collection, various crowns including samurai warrior headgear, famous jewels of the world, and swords of state. While developing the doll room, which opened in 1984, a staggering number of dolls were acquired. To best display this multitude, two multi-level carousels were built, one of three tiers and one of six. The carousels revolved just slowly enough for you to study each and every doll. In the House on the Rock dollhouse collection, some dolls are big, some small, and some are so tiny you'd think your eyes were deceiving you. Each of the doll's attires are individually styled, then fabricated and sewn by hand. It's this unceasing attention to detail on such a diminutive scale that makes the House on the Rock doll room the gigantic experience that it is.